Hello, I'm Armin from Placid and this week we will build our own PDF creating microservice using only no code tools. Your microservice will be able to receive a webhook and send a custom branded PDF certificate as the attachment of an email. This is one of the easiest and quickest ways to get such an advanced workflow hooked up to your no code or even coded projects. So for example, after a customer finished your course, you can fire up the webhook and be sure that he will receive his custom designed PDF certificate. To build this service, I have prepared a Placid project with the make integration added and a template. A Placid template is similar to a design in Canva or Photoshop, but it can be filled with data to auto generate visuals. Using one of our main integrations, you can fill text and media layers with your data to create images, videos or PDFs. As our workflow automator, I've chosen to use Make. And to send the email in the end, I will use SendGrid, but Make also allows for many other options. So let's start building it. We start our Make scenario for our microservice by adding a webhook module. So let's go here, we search for webhook. There it is. Then we want to create a custom webhook. <clears throat> then we have to add a new one. Let's call it Placid PDF Microservice. Um, there's also a field where you could restrict it by IP address, so, so add another layer of, of security in front of your service so that only your servers are allowed to, to call this. Right? But we will leave it empty. then we are able to define a data structure. This is below the advanced settings. I like to do this because then in the rest of the scenario we, we have already fields available that we can easily use. So we hit add, we call it certificate structure. <laughs> then we can say it's strict. So we can only add the fields that, that we added to our specification. We add an item which will be the name of the field will be email and it will be a text field. This is of course required. This is the email where we will send the certificate in the end. As our next step, we need a name. This will be the name that we will print onto our PDF. So like, like here in center, first name and last name. So it will also be a text. It's also required. And what else do we need? Mm, we need a date, right? We just need a date. Let's edit, call it date. I think we can go with text here <coughs> and, and just put it formatted in or, or however you like so we don't have to struggle with predefined formats. We said required, yes. And save it. So now we have saved it. And now Make is asking us to, to test this webhook. You can use any kind of REST API or webhook testing tool to, to test this markup. I use one on the Mac that's called Paw. Looks like this. You can just copy in the address here, paste it here, and then we need to add our fields. So we have added a name, which will be Then we have an email address, which will also be mine. And in the end, we need a date. So let's keep the format of here. <coughs> date. Let's make it on Saturday. Ah. Saturday. So. Then we can call it. And I think Make already got it. Yeah, Make already got our webhook. It seems that the, the structure was correct. And this way we are already able to call this URL from our webhook, receive this data and use this data in our next steps. So for example, we, we can now already go into a step where we are going to create the PDF with, with those values. So gonna add another value, uh, another module, call it Placid. 
we're going to create a PDF. Now we have to connect the project. This will be our PDF micro service. Then we go back into Placid, click on integrate, copy our API token, head back, paste it here, save. And we're good to go. Now we will get a list of templates where we have only one because we have only one certificate. <clears throat> and now we get all the fields that are dynamically defined in this certificate. So if I click edit here, every field that has these arrows is dynamic, which means we can fill it through, uh, through make or any other integrations. And you can just toggle them and, and change every field that you, that you added to your design but we just need a few ones, so we don't change the subline. We change the name to the name of our webhook. The description will stay the same, the author stays the same, and then we have the date feed, date. So, and this should already be everything that we need. Let's have a look again. So we want to change the name field, it's the big one here and the date in the bottom left, right? Then we close it again and let's give it a try. We can run this module only, I think. Ah, we have to supply a name and a date because the webhook is, hasn't been called. So we call it test name and <clears throat> this one will be the first first. And now Make is calling Pleasant.app and creating a PDF out of this template for us to use. Ah, it's already finished. Let's open up. Yeah, here we go. We already have a URL that we can open. There it is. This is the test name that I've supplied and this is the, the custom date. Awesome. So essentially, since I've mapped those fields already and I've supplied it, this is already working. <laughs> this is amazing. So the next step would be to add an email. Like, like we, we already have the PDF. Now, now we could already go to the email step and send it out because this is what we want. Um, we are going to use SendGrid for that just because we, we are sending everything with them and we have accounts there and everything set up. Like I just go to send an email, select my, my Placid SendGrid connection and I'm able to fill out everything. But uh, you don't have to use SendGrid, of course, just as an example, email. Make is offering you to connect like, like any provider that you want. Like you can send, send an email, you can hook up uh, specific Google related accounts, you can hook up any SMTP account, so for example any existing one, or you can add your own SMTP data, so for example uh, with your SMTP uh, credentials you, you can send those emails from your private address, but of course n don't send too many of them or you will hit spam, but, but a few uh, will be alright and will cut costs, of course. So just, just as an idea, so I'm gonna delete this again. So, we want to send an email. <clears throat> uh, the from email address will be my own. This is a fixed value. And the name is Armin from Placid Certificates. That's the company that we're working for today. <laughs> uh, we will send it to one email address which comes uh, out of our webhook, so we take the email address from here and the name, maybe we can also pick the name from, from the certificate, so this this should be fine and as a subject, we say your PDF certificate as a content type, for now we just go plain text and say hey ya, uh, we attached your certificate, thank you and now we can add an attachment. And then we see a file name and a data field. So 
uh, Placid is only returning an URL to your PDF and uh, by default make is not taking them uh, taking an URL directly and attaching it to an email so we have to get the file first and then we can attach this field as, as a binary field onto this uh, onto, onto this module as an attachment but but it's pretty easy so I, I will close this again hit OK and we have to do this before we're gonna send the email so for example we add another module here which would be the HTTP module this is the one who is able to make any form of request authenticated not authenticated uh, with any headers totally custom like like you could call other webhooks or you can out of a scenario call like like any webhook that, that you've created any microservice and anything so but we only want to get a file and the URL will be the PDF URL that the Placid module is bringing us back, right? Then we hit OK. Let's move this up a bit. And now when we want to send this as an attachment, we should be able to add an item. Yeah, here it is. Now we can, we, we have two options now. You can uh, just pick HTTP get a file. This is automatically referenced to the module before. So this will just pick the file, attach it and that's it. Or another option would be if you want a custom file name, you could pick only the data part out of the, the HTTP get a file and supply your own file name. But uh, we don't want this now and we just hit HTTP get a file, click OK. And I think this is already everything we need. Uh, let's have a test, right? Since we have created a PDF already, HTTP HTTP should be able to get this file, right? Ah, it's not picking it up. But I can, I can put it in. Yeah, got it. So I think we are able to test this now and give it a full run. So let's hit run once. Our webhook will now listen since our scenario isn't uh, isn't being set to live. So we pull up our REST API testing tool and we'll just run our webhook call with the three fields that we've already had in the beginning and make should and already got it. Oh, it's running. It's creating a PDF. PDF is created. Oh, and the email is being sent. So let's pull up the inbox. and see if it's coming. True enough, there it is. Armin from Placid Certificate sent us a certificate with the subject your PDF certificate and he thanks me for finishing his course. Let's open up. Yeah, there it is. Our custom name with our custom date tomorrow. We have successfully completed the Placid PDF Microservices course at youtube.com. Sounds good to me. So this was a simple example of how to create your own microservice using Make. And it, it's just not, not just limited to PDFs. You, you could put everything behind this webhook and, and any workflow that you'd like and call it out of an Airtable, uh, out of a simple script, or of course you can use it coded. Like um, back in the day, I, I, me coming from a backend engineer perspective, uh, a workflow like this would, would be like 100 hours of work and, and a lot of money to, to get built. Not speaking of the this whole design process and everything that's involved. And it's amazing that, that this can be built like, like in an hour or two. And I, I hope this helped you, this, this sparks some, some nice ideas. Just comment below if you have an idea what I could build next. Bye. So that's it for this automation. You will find a link to our blog post with a step-by-step -step recap of this tutorial in the description. Try it out and tell us what you think.